Yeah, well, what, I, what I want to, I don't want to get involved in the politics of this because it's way above my pay grade. But And also, it distracts, I think, from the enormous amount that we as Muslims and Jews have in common as, as faiths, as religions. And I, I, I was really heartened recently uh, with um, Joseph's, uh, the new senior rabbi of the Spanish and Portuguese congregation in, in Britain, um, in the way he spoke about, the way he so sensitively spoke about the Torah's teaching on homosexuality uh, in today's uh, context in the UK. Uh, and uh, I listened to that and I thought, here is someone after my own heart. He talks, uh, he speaks about this issue with sensitivity and discernment without betraying his own tradition. And in some ways, not unfortunately, he will be heard by many Muslims, but he, here's an example that we can emulate uh, in our own uh, Ummah, in, in communities, to talk about this with, with, with compassion and sensitivity without betraying the truths of our faith. So I was really impressed with this guy, who's from Los Angeles, I think, yeah. it? West Hollywood of all places, but he ends up in London. <laughs> and it turns out, because I live in Maida Vale, that he's actually the local, my local rabbi as well. <laughs> And so that's one of the things I think is really, really important. So you've got a brother, a cousin, who's a Muslim, who's listened to a Jewish rabbi in London. And we, we call it the rabbi, that we say it's a Kiddush Hashem. When someone goes out from the Jewish community and does something that improves the name of Jews amongst the other nations, and more importantly, improves the name of, of Allah, of God, amongst the nations. Because we see ourselves as ambassadors, representative of um, the, the covenant of Moses. And so for a Jewish rabbi, a British rabbi, an American rabbi, to go out and have, and actually influence in a positive way, a Muslim's perception of Judaism. Although I will jump in, you very knowledgeable on Judaism, much more so than many of my Jewish friends. So uh, I, I, certainly on the, the Old Testament. And maybe that ties in a little bit to your, your story. I've been speaking to Paul on and off for a couple of years now, speaking yeah. to Donna. and. Paul regularly engages with Muslim, well, Christians, Jews, Muslims, atheists. And atheists, and talks about religion, talks about yeah. monotheism. Um, but he has a very, very deep um, knowledge on the Old Testament, and the, well, certainly more so than many of the people I know. Um, and I, I just personally, I think it's been a real pleasure for me to actually listen to you debating with various people here. But. If I'm right, it's because you originally you set out life as a Christian yeah, yeah. and you studied theology at the university yeah. and then came to Islam later in life. Yeah, that, that's right, and it's one of the amazing things we do. It's sort of the tragedy of the era we live in today, without going into the politics of it, is that we have so much in common in our faith. We both uh, worship, uh, in my view, the same God. Uh, we both uh, do not view the Messiah, whoever he may be, uh, having come or still to come, as in any way a God to be worshipped to be sacrificed to as atonement for sin. No, 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 we, we, we believe that God alone uh, is due worship and praise to whom we give our allegiance to. And so we have enormous amounts in common, uh, uh, and, and this is really heartening, this shame our communities are divided. And, and I'm hoping this will just be a footnote in history, and in, in the longer context of classical Islam and the classical Jewish tradition, uh, you know, honored by people like Maimonides and others, I don't know if we can even be heard. I don't think we'll be heard at the moment. The wind seems to shifted. We have so much, much. We have so much in common in in the classical, moderate, balanced uh, Islam uh, historically. Uh, obviously, not the extremist groups that we uh, are Muslims and Jews are afflicted by today. Uh, and historically, Judaism as well has been a very cultural and civilizing influence in in the in the Muslim world, in in Muslim Spain and in Muslim Turkey and, and many other places. As well, so I yeah. think that's a really powerful message. And help, help, you know, going back to Rabbi Dwe, mm -hmm. I think that really represents what you've just said. The Jewish influence within the Muslim world has been a positive one, just like the, the Muslim influence in the Jewish world has been incredibly positive. Our great rabbi didn't come from Christian countries, I'm going to get shot for saying this, but they came from Muslim no, countries. Absolutely. The Rambam, who's a rabbi who I follow, I consider myself a Talmud of the Rambam, as does Rabbi Dwe came from a Muslim country. Absolutely. He lived in Muslim countries his entire life. And it wasn't coincidence that a rabbi like Rambam was born out of Muslim country. It was the Islamic environment, the incredible qualities that were given to the Jews that enabled Judaism to flourish in those environments. And similarly, Judaism was able to have an equally um, positive impact on the Muslim lands they lived in. And Absolutely. for me, it's a real privilege to hear a Muslim saying that he's still experiencing those positive influence from the Jewish community today. I think one of the things to really stress on here is I'm a Zionist Jew. To most of the people in the background, 
I am seen as the Antichrist, as the Dajjal, just because I'm a Zionist. But if we can actually look beyond the politics, I think we'll find we have far more in common. Yes, I, I, well, see, Joseph, I, I'm looking uh, at a, a Jew who is following Judaism, the, 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 the religion of Moses, if you like. And is that I can respect that and honour that. Uh, but uh, regardless of the politics of the last 50 years, uh, which is an area I'm desperately trying not to touch on because uh, it is so <laughs> divisive, so incendiary, and, um, uh, uh, and, and obscures the, the elephant in the room, which is our shared monotheistic inheritance and witnessing to the one God, the yeah. one true God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And I think uh, I just like the touch, because many of my followers on YouTube and Facebook have very little exposure to Islam. And all they know of Islam is masked up, suicide belt wearing, jihadists in the Gaza or wherever, which is not representative. So I think what would be a really positive message for my viewers is maybe just to share some of those commonalities that we, we have. Absolutely. So, I mean, that, that we, we have, Islam has its extremists, but we have 1.7 billion followers on earth. 1.7 billion with a B, not an M. Uh, and yes, we have problems with extremists. So uh, I acknowledge that, but uh, I'm looking at the, the big historical picture here, right back to the time of the Jewish Bible over the thousands of years since. And it's that that I'm looking at when I talk about uh, Jews and Judaism, rather than the very, very recent past in certain parts of the world. And I think it's a danger we lose that perspective when we get caught up in the, the conflicts and the pain and the agony of the moment now, and we forget uh, that, that, that golden history that Jews and, uh, Jews and Muslims do share. Yeah. Uh, throughout some very beautiful times in our human history. Uh, and we forget that. And I think it goes even beyond just like the shared history. It actually has a lot of shared theology. So for instance, every Muslim, and correct me if I say anything wrong here, Paul, but every Muslim, if it's within their ability, is supposed to go on Hajj once, on their, once in their lifetime. Absolutely. When they get to Mecca, they circle the Kaaba. Is it seven times? And they go in a certain direction. Now, in Judaism, when we had our temple, we went on something called Hajj. So anyway, we're coming up to the Hajj of Sukkot. And in, the, in the, the biblical time, we would actually be commanded to walk, to visit Jerusalem. And when we got there, we'd visit the temple and we'd circle it seven times. Now what's really interesting is, while we call it um, Hag today, um, in certain areas of Yemen, they pronounce it, the, the Gimel they pronounce Ajah. So they go on Hajj, and they used to go on Hajj to Jerusalem and circle so the I didn't temple know that. I didn't seven know that. times. I've learned something today, I didn't know that. And, uh, oh, that's interesting, very interesting. And there's a, there's a lot of commonalities. Um, at one point, we even prayed in the same direction. No, we still do, but we're just well, going, yeah. we're stopping a little short. At one short. point, we both prayed towards yeah. Jerusalem. This is true. Uh, it's very, very true. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, having looked at Islam and Judaism, uh, uh, of course, I shouldn't say this because it might not be technically right, but I see Islam as a kind of a universalized Judaism. Uh, again, controversial, you don't have to accept that. So there is so much in common, both in terms of the content of the halakha or the sharia, its purpose, its role in society, uh, the nature of God, how we draw close to God, how he draws close to us in, in, in mercy. Uh, I, I see it is so similar as to the uncanny. But as I say, we don't recognize that today because of the other issues that have contaminated the, uh, the, this commonality, which is part of the tragedy of the era we live in. Um, but I see that similarity uh, very strongly. Uh, and, and many Muslims do, uh, educated Muslims. It's not so just not me, not me. And, and I can vouch for that. To be honest, in my experience, and this is just anecdotal, the overwhelming majority of Muslims I meet are very, very positive for Jews. They know very little about Judaism. Um, politics does get in the way, but most Muslims can look beyond that. And I, I do the encounter, actually, I look at, I search out extremists, I look for them, but they're a minority. The majority of Muslims I meet are actually pretty ignorant to Judaism, just like the majority of Jews are pretty ignorant to Islam. Yeah. But there's positivity from both communities. Yeah. It's very rare I meet a Muslim like Paul, who's very knowledgeable on both of our traditions. Um, <laughs> and so that's why, that's why we thought we'd interview, to try to um, promote what we have in common, rather than modern politics which divide us. I thank uh, Joseph for this opportunity to, to talk like this. Uh, it's a, a, a unique opportunity. I've not spoken like this before, so I just thank him for that. Uh, likewise, Paul, it's always a pleasure. And as I said, I've been coming to Speaker's Corner for a few years now, and I'm not saying this to, to massage his ego, but Paul is one of the most knowledgeable people I speak to here, and conducts himself with, with dignity, uh, as a mensch, as we'd say in, in Yiddish. Um, so yeah, really appreciate your time, Paul. Cheers, mate.